Alrighty, uh, so on this problem we want to find the points of inflection and discuss the concavity of the graph of the function. So we have f of x equals x times the square root of x plus 3. So I like to go ahead and find uh, my critical numbers because we have to find that first derivative anyway. So let's start there with finding the first derivative. Okay, so find that first derivative we would have f let's change the square root to uh, exponential notation all right now um, derivative we have to use the product rule so first times derivative of the second Uh, plus, and that will be times the derivative of the inside, derivative of the inside of that function is 1, uh, plus the second times the derivative of the first, the second function, x plus 3 to the 1 half, times the derivative of x, which is 1. Okay, and let's clean this up and simplify it some. Okay, so, so I'll go ahead and move this x to plus 3 to the negative 1 half. I'll move it down to my denominator along with the 2 from the 1 half. So I'll have x in my numerator over 2 and we'll go make that square root. Alright, and then I want to write this in the 1 fraction so I'm going to get a common denominator of 2 times uh, the square root of x plus 3. So my first fraction already had that denominator. I need to multiply this by 2 times the square root of x plus 3. So we know x plus the square root of x plus 3 times the square root of x plus 3 is simply x plus 3. All right, and that simplifies. We use distributive property that will give us 2x plus 6. So that simplifies to 3x plus 6 all over 2 times the square root of x plus 3. All right, so that's the first derivative. Um, now from here, I can go ahead and find my critical number if I have any critical number of numbers, and I can. Um, I can all I can go ahead and uh, determine my concavity. So let's see if we have f. Well, we'll we'll just hold that. Let's go ahead and find the second derivative and see if that gives us anything. Uh, now make sure you pay attention to your domain, especially when you're dealing with uh, square roots. Uh, so since we have the square root of x plus three our domain is limited to x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 or x is uh, greater than or equal to negative 3 so our domain is limited and if you write that in set notation that would be negative 3 to infinity so from negative 3 to infinity would be our domain and that goes all the way through to the second derivative when we're looking at that as well so uh, so we'll keep that there and we'll go ahead and find the second derivative let's highlight this so we have our first derivative here now let's go ahead and find the second derivative to see if we can find concavity I mean um, point of inflection to determine the concavity if not we'll have to come back here and find the critical number and use that, that information So our first derivative is 3x plus 6 over 2 times the square root of uh, x plus 3. So I'll go ahead and write that back in exponential notation since we are about to find the second derivative. I'll use my quotient rule here. So my quotient rule, uh, low d high minus high d low over low low. So my denominator. times the derivative of my numerator minus my numerator 
times the derivative of my denominator. all over uh, my denominator squared. All right, so that's using the quotient rule there. All right, and we definitely need to clean this up some, so let's start cleaning it up. So 3 times 2 is 6 times the square root of x plus 3 minus, I, I know that the 2 and the 1 half will cancel each other out, so uh, 3x plus 6, and I had x plus 3 to the negative 1 half, so I'm going to move that down to my denominator and make that the square root of x plus 3. Three. So this will be a complex fraction. So if I now working with my main denominator here, I'm going to square everything. So 2 squared is 4. Uh, x plus 3 to the 1 half squared. Uh, the 1 half and the square will cancel each other out. So that's just x plus 3. Okay, so if you work with complex fractions before, there, there are different ways to work with these. I like to uh, find the least common multiple of my small my many denominators so I have this this is the only many denominator I call it that I have so uh, the least common multiple is the square root of x plus 3 so I'm going to multiply uh, each uh, everything by the square root of x plus 3 to clear that denominator all right so if I multiply 6 times the square root of x plus 3 times the square root of x plus 3, that will give me, if I multiply the second fraction here times the square root of x plus 3, the square root of x plus 3 would cancel out, and that would just give me minus uh, 3x plus 6. And then in my denominator, if I multiply that by the square root of x plus 3, give me there okay so let's simplify that square root of x plus 3 times the square root of x plus 3 is just x plus 3 so 6 times x plus 3 distribute well I'll come back and distribute next So here we have 12x, uh, 4x plus 12. Excuse me. Okay. Now let's use our distributed property and set this equal to zero to see if we can find some points of inflection. So 6x plus 18 minus 3x plus 6. Right, so we have 6x minus 3x is 3x and 18 that should be minus 6 sorry about that 18 minus 6 is 12 equals and let's set that equal to 0 to find our point of inflection or inflection so if I multiply both sides by my denominator then I would end up with 3x minus 12 because if I multiply this times 0 that's 0 so 3x minus 12 equals 0 uh, that should be plus 12 I'm sorry about that mistake so subtract 12 from each side 3x equals negative 12 x equals negative 4 as a possible point of inflection but keep in mind that our domain goes from negative 3 to infinity so this point of inflection it falls outside of our domain so we do not have a point of inflection the point of inflection does not exist 
So since the point of inflection does not exist, we have to go back to our original methods of finding uh, concavity, which would mean we're going to go back up to the first derivative, which you could have done that first, but it did ask for a uh, point of inflection. Uh, so go back up to the first derivative and let's find, see if we have any critical numbers. So to find the critical numbers, we would set the first derivative equal to zero. And then solve. So again, if I multiply this by zero, that will give me 3x plus 6 equals zero. Subtract 6, divide by 2, x equals negative 2. And that falls within our domain. So our domain was from negative three to infinity. So negative two falls within our domain. Uh, so now we need to test to see where this thing is increasing, decreasing, and so on. Uh, so I want to, I know I have an endpoint of negative three. So from negative three, I'm going to test from negative three to negative two. And then I will test from negative uh, two to zero or to infinity, sorry, we didn't have anything else. So to infinity. So if I take a number between negative three and negative two, say negative 2.5 and plug it back into my original function, we just want to know is this positive or negative. So I'm going to plug it back into my original function. Uh, my original function was uh, f of x equals x times the square root of x plus three. Uh, so we're, we're going to let x equal negative 2.5. So negative 2.5, because that'll fall between negative three and two, times the square root of negative 2.5 plus three. And you can go through that entire calculation. Negative 2.5 plus 3 is positive uh, 0.5. Find the square root of that and multiply it times negative 2.5. What I know is that when I multiply this positive under my radical times this negative here, that's going to give me a negative result. So that tells me that this thing is decreasing uh, from starting at negative 3 to two, negative 2. Then negative two to infinity, I'm going to test uh, zero because that's the, one of the easiest numbers to test back into that original function. So replace X with zero. So zero, zero plus three. Um, and that may not have been a good number to test. Let's start, let's go to, cause that'll give us zero. Uh, let's say one. Uh, so 3 plus 1 is 4, uh, positive 4, uh, square, square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, so that's positive. Uh, so we know it goes from negative to positive, so we know this thing is decreasing, and then when it gets to where x is equal to 2, it begins to increase. Therefore, uh, that tells me that, uh, let's see, my concavity... That it, it tells me that it will be concave uh, upwards. This thing will be concave upwards uh, on that interval from negative, remember what our domain was, from, uh, from negative three to infinity, it is concave upwards. So from negative three to infinity, and we always use those open intervals, so it's three to infinity, this thing is concave upwards. It's never concave downwards uh, because we don't have, you see, we don't have another critical number for it to change directions. Uh, so it's concave upwards. It starts decreasing and then it increases at, I said negative, uh, negative, that would be negative two on this one. Sorry, we had it right. Negative three to infinity. It's concave upwards because we have the endpoint of negative three here, and then we uh, change directions at negative two. So it's concave upwards from negative three to two. Negative three to infinity. I'll see it right in just a second. All right. So hopefully that found you found that to be helpful. So again, what we did, we found the first derivative 
using the product rule and once we found the first derivative this was asking about points of inflection so we went ahead and found the second derivative as well uh, so we found the second derivative but once we found that second derivative we found and set it equal to zero we found that the possible point of inflection fell outside of our domain uh, so going back up to the first derivative we set our first derivative equal to zero to find the critical number which is negative two and then we test it between negative three and negative two and negative two to infinity and once we tested negative 2.5 which was between negative three and negative two back into the original function we got a negative uh, result out of that so that tells me that my function was decreasing and then uh, at, we tested positive one which gave us a positive result so it tells me that my function was increasing from the critical number up and if I were to sketch a graph of that that would be decreasing and then increasing and we did not have another critical number so it continues to increase uh, so that tells me that this was concave upwards from negative three to infinity again we got the negative three from the domain all right hope you found that to be helpful thank you